okay, no intro to this video. Wasn't planning on filming or posting anything today, so... Today's for me, but you never know. Something could happen. Okay, clear. So you'll see what happens. This is pull one. Ready? Find T D C Nope. Oh, that's awesome. That was the legit first pull. Legit. That was the first pull ice cold start. Psyched. No wind launches. Story of my life. Okay. Be really nice to get in the air right away today. That's what I'll do today. I will casually fly and I will talk about my wings. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Woo! Hell yeah. Oh baby. That is what you want to see right there. Freaking beautiful. Doing my scan for traffic. Flying out of an airport tip number one. Check for traffic before you take off. Arrive early so you can get a good feel for what the operations are like that day if they're busy for some reason or not. And always cross the runway high and in the center if you can, which you always should be able to. And make it a deliberate cross. So point directly perpendicular to it. That way, if another pilot sees you that you don't see, they know exactly what you're doing. Cross the runway and then continue on your way. Okay. This is a decent altitude. Came to the airport today with no plan. I uh, just knew it was Saturday and I had my morning free and the weather looked good, so head to the airport. I know I always say this in my videos, but when I wake up at 5.30 on a Saturday, man, it is, it's hard, harder to get out of bed on a Saturday morning than any other day, even when I know I'm going to fly. So today, you can see that new wing. So looks exactly like my old wing, uh, which I still have. It's a 20 meter hadron that I used to fly. and this. It's an 18 meter. This is my fourth flight on it. So I flew three times last week with it, and I have not had anything knock on wood, anything go wrong yet. I mean, I haven't, I haven't had to abort a launch. I haven't uh, failed a launch due to you know, pilot error. Um, it's launched straight all four times. Um, the landings are a different stories. So the first landing, after I took off, I felt the brakes were a little bit long. And I was like, oh. That's going to be shitty when I come in, so I'll just remember to take a wrap. So I came in, I took one wrap, and it still wasn't enough. I couldn't, I mean, I came in, and I, I flared. I came in hot. I had energy, but not enough. And I uh, slid on my feet and then tripped over like an anthill or whatever the hell it was, deep grass. I don't know what it was. And I came in, hit my knees, and slid. No damage to anything. The just came down in front of me, which is frustrating. Yeah, so then I went home, adjusted my brake. Second uh, landing, second flight, second landing, after I adjusted my brake, after I took off, they were, I pulled them too far in. Came in, uh, and it was a, a good landing. Except I, when I came in to land, I overflared, which I, I never do. I've never had that problem. That's where you come in, kind of flare too early, you pop up. And if you don't handle it correctly, you can kind of fall out of the sky for like, I mean, it's only maybe 10, 15 feet, but that's enough to break your legs. Well, it really hurt. So anyway, I came in, flared a little too high, felt it coming kind of eased up a little bit, tried to get as much energy as back as I could, and then completed my flare. Landed at my feet, but it wasn't as smooth as I wanted it to be. Um, these were all nil wins, by the way, of course. Third one, again, no adjustments to the brakes or tip toggle, uh, and came in, kind of did a nice little hook turn, came in, kind of held that energy and just let it off, let it off, foot drag, run, stop, off. Wing came down behind me. And uh, that was a great flight altogether. That's the video I posted uh, prior to this one. Yeah. So this is my fourth flight. Um, so I don't I don't have that many hours on the 18. Uh, I got a bunch on the 20. Uh, I really liked it, but my weight range I feel like I'd be better on the 18. So I'm 40% loaded on this wing, and I was only like right around 30% loaded on the uh, on the 20. I feel like 40-50% is right where I want to be. 
uh, especially for the type of flying that I'm doing. Being only 40% loaded, the wing's still really efficient. I haven't noticed a huge difference in like fuel efficiency or anything. Obviously, takeoffs and landings are faster, but um, the big difference is in the air. Right now, I've been under cruise, and I can really easily control this wing with weight shift. I didn't have that on the 20. I really had to pull for that weight shift. Um, and I had a little bit of an oscillation on the 20, and I think that's just that was a little bit too lightly loaded on it. And then the next thing, obviously, is the uh, responsiveness of this wing. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, a fairly touch of brakes. I think we just wait over for days. And then you can come out of it with just a little bit of a turn like that. I love it, dude. I love it. Uh, what else? What else? What else? The swing. Um, yeah, I guess a, just a huge thank you to Bitch. This thing was damn near brand new. Um, so I'm stoked, man. Uh, it's in as, as good a condition as my wing is, and it's probably got 20 more hours on it. So uh, I'm really, really happy with it. I love it. Uh, so thanks, bud. I don't know what else there is to say about the wing right now. Like I said, I've probably only got five hours on it. I guess I could talk about questions I get about this wing a lot. So people are, uh, reach out to me with questions about the Hadron. You know, hey, is this a good wing for me? Is this that? And depending on who you talk to, you get almost polar opposite views. Some people are in love with this wing, love the way it launches, love the way it flies, all that. Some people say it launches like shit, uh, dangerous to fly, this and that. So you really got to gather as much data as you can. Uh, and then finally, fly for yourself. So I was not a fan of the launching characteristics of this wing. And since I've been saying that, I've kind of attributed that to the fact that it just requires a consistent technique and I almost want to say a flawless technique. And some people argue with me on that, but in my experience, um, I've really got to focus. I've got to make sure my layout is perfect. I've got to make sure I run hard. I've got to make sure I hold my A's, only let go at either noon or when I know that wing is flying, which is always almost at 12 o'clock. For me, that's that's the only time I see success in launching this wing is when I'm deliberate about my actions when I fly or when I launch. So my buddy Butch, who I flew with, um, disagreed with that. He said it was one of the easiest launching wings he's flown. So, and again, a lot of this is based on what you've flown in the past, right? So my wing before this, before the 20, and people are gonna get pissed that I made a big jump here, but whatever, it was a Revo 3. And that wing was so forgiving. I mean, you can, I lay it out, perfectly straight, no arc, nothing, uh, just tighten up the A's and start walking forward into a nice jog and you're, you're in the air. It was, it was so easy to launch. You didn't have to take a step back, nothing. Just tighten up the A's, start running, and then if you got it moving up, you can let go of the A's and that thing would just climb above your head. The next, people like to tell you you're going to die on this wing for a lot of reasons. One, um, I mentioned it before, it's hot, right? This wing is it's not, it's truly not for beginners, right? It, the the danger with this wing comes in that it well one it's ground hungry two it doesn't take much to get this thing upside down right so if I pull look at this there you go that was one pull that's two and that was like two inches of brake pressure on each side maybe not even and I got inverted and I lost a couple hundred feet right there she was like maybe not that much but it dove right that's something that a you know a 50 hour a 40 hour pilot might not have experience with. Once you start getting inverted and you have all this energy, you got to bleed it off. Uh, and that was something that I definitely uh, had to learn was how to how to come out of wing over and not have to go back into wing over, but burn it off without surging the wing or coming up and unloading the wing. Um, and it's all just by feeling, right? It just took it easy, spirals to larger spirals to wing tip going below the horizon to finally getting over the wing. And then the final thing that I think people uh, base their opinions on whether or not you're going to die on this wing off of are the flaps. These things here. So I've, I've discussed the flaps in previous videos, but real quick, it's something you need to just be aware of. So read your wing manual. And I, it surprises me how many people buy or fly wing without reading the manual or at least doing a bunch of research first. I mean, before I bought this wing, I read the manual like five times cover to cover. Um, so before I even asked for people's advice on this wing, I already knew about the flaps. I already knew if you have the flaps pulled in and you let the trimmers out, the main trimmers out, that's a collapse. 
And it was the same thing on the Repo 3, right? That had the same idea. You let the trimmers all the way out, it turns into a reflex slider, and you're not supposed to use brakes, use tip toggle. So, kind of getting back to what I said, you kind of have to just take everybody's opinions and everything like that, weigh it, determine it's a good glider for you. For me, I wanted a hotter wing, I thought I was ready for it, so I went with Dudek. Um, I was considering a free ride before that. I was considering uh, the Sirocco, a couple other wings, um, Ozone, but uh, trying to find a used Ozone wing is damn near impossible. And uh, the, the price tag that came with a, a brand new one, I just couldn't swing at the time. So, yeah, that's kind of what let me down the Dudex path. Uh, and I'm stoked, man. I dig it. I really do like this swing. All right, I'm going to listen to some tunes. I'll leave you with that. And I will try to keep the camera alive long enough for an outro. If not, I'll do it. I'm on my cell phone, but God, I'm out. fun flight I uh, made it all the way out to those two um, sand quarries or whatever they're mining out there um, and it was fun uh, so I guess final thoughts on the wing um, that was my fourth landing on it it was amazing it was my first landing with any wind um, which is awesome uh, came in floated it was perfect I, I wanted to wait four or five flights uh, put a few hours in the wing before I decided if I wanted this to be my only wing um, and I'm pretty comfortable with being my only wing, so like I said, I've had my no wind launches, I've had my windy launches, or my no wind launches and no wind landings, and I've had my uh, first landing with wind, which of course is going to be easier than without, so um, uh, I love it, and uh, I'm probably going to be throwing that 20 meter up for sale uh, sometime pretty soon, so if anyone's interested in a 20 meter Hadron with about 40 hours on it, it's in good condition, nothing wrong with it. Um, I will uh, or comment below and we can talk. So, I'm right, man. Peace.